In this video, I'm going to share five key things that every educator should know how to do in Zoom. If you're an educator of any type, you likely are going to be using Zoom a lot this upcoming school year. Everything from meetings to office hours to classroom teaching. There are certain things that we can do to make your life easier, but also to increase the accessibility of that format. And that is so important in this digital age. I want to start with the tip that I believe is most important that if you take one thing from this video and apply it to your class, I think this is the most important tip. And that is using the closed captioning system within PowerPoint to make your Zoom meetings more accessible. Okay, so here we are in Zoom and Zoom just released this really cool feature where you can use a PowerPoint as a virtual background. And some of you may be really tempted to use this. However, I'm gonna encourage you not to, because there's a better way to share a PowerPoint that makes your course more accessible to all of your students. So let me show you what that looks like. If you go to share screen, it's gonna open up. And if you choose advanced, you could choose this new PowerPoint as a virtual background. And so many of you are going to be tempted to do this. And it does this really cool thing where it loads the PowerPoint up. You could see me overlaid down in that bottom corner and I could actually click and move myself around wherever I want to go within this PowerPoint. I could shrink me and I could make me huge, which is really cool features. However, this makes your PowerPoint much less accessible to your students. And so the power that we can do here is pretty limited. You can just go forward and backward through these slides that are already preloaded. You can see that there's not a lot of options for managing this. So let me show you how to share a PowerPoint in a different way. And so if you're already sharing, and this is a cool tip, a little bonus one here, you can click share screen again and choose a different screen to share. You don't have to stop the share and then reshare. So once you're in PowerPoint, in order to make what I'm about to show you work, we need to go over to slideshow and we need to make sure that we have always used subtitles enabled. Now, if your language is not English, if your spoken language is not English, what you want to do is go to the subtitle settings and you could change your spoken language to any number of other spoken languages. So that's the first part. Now I'm going to present this PowerPoint and this is being shared in Zoom, but what you can see is that as I talk, PowerPoint is automatically transcribing my words and my talk and my content. And this is so powerful. And that was so easy to do when it comes to making your class more accessible. This is something that you can do in seconds and it will improve your students' experience. They will get more out of your class by having this on. You can encourage your students to do this if your students are sharing a presentation within Zoom. They can do this same thing. Now, I want to show you a couple more cool things with this. Maybe you're like me and you teach at a Hispanic serving institution and a lot of your students might be English second language. So if we go back to PowerPoint and I need to actually, there we go. Under subtitle settings, I can make the subtitle language any number of languages as well. And so I said Hispanic serving institution. I have a lot of students who are English second language and their primary language is Spanish. So now when I go to present, what PowerPoint is actually going to do is it is going to not only transcribe what I'm saying, but it's going to automatically translate it into that language that I chose. And this is so 
powerful. Could you imagine being an English second language student and you come into a class and your instructor acknowledges this and actually translates live for you? That is so powerful. And any of you in the comments, you can let me know how well it does. Um, I have talked with some other students and they said it actually does a pretty good job. So you can let me know if you're a native Spanish speaker that whether this is bad or not. So that's the first tip I have for you here is use PowerPoint to natively present when you're sharing your screen with the intention of sharing a PowerPoint. You can use that new Zoom one where you're overlaid, but you on the PowerPoint doesn't change a lot. Unless you physically are doing something your students need to see, there's not a lot of point to you being there. They can see your face in the little window while they look at your screen while it automatically transcribes. So it's way more powerful to do it this way. The second tip is arguably the next most important one, and this is annotations while sharing within Zoom. This is another way to increase the accessibility of your content and actually communicate in a more clear manner for your students. Okay, so we are back in Zoom, and the next thing that I'm gonna show you is how to annotate your presentations and actually allow students to annotate as well, which is a cool tool. You could turn it on or off, but there's some setup that needs to happen first. So we're gonna navigate away from Zoom, and we are going to go to the web access of your Zoom settings. So you could click on more settings from the main area there, but what you're going to do is you're gonna go into here and you're going to scroll down into, down into in meeting, and you're gonna scroll until you see this annotation site and you want to turn it on. And this allows hosts and participants to use annotation tools to add information to shared screen. I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like. Now, if you want to be the only one who can do this, click this button right here. So only the user who's sharing can annotate. However, if you leave it open, other people can annotate while you talk, which is actually really powerful and I wanna show you the power of this. So, okay, now that we have that done, let's go ahead and go back to Zoom. Okay, so we are back in Zoom and let's go ahead and start a presentation back on that PowerPoint we looked at earlier. So here we are, I'm going to, let's put the subtitle languages back to English because I think the majority of the audience watching this video will be watching it in English. So I'm going to go ahead and present. And now what you may notice is that there's this new annotate button here on the shared screen. So I click that and now I have a ton of different options that come up and so, what I can do here is let's say I want to spotlight. This is kind of one of the cool ones. My mouse now becomes a laser pointer. So if you want to really highlight in on a piece of your PowerPoint, your students will now see this little laser pointer that works with your mouse, which is cool. Stamping is pretty cool. So a stamp allows you to put an arrow. So if you want to draw attention to something in your PowerPoint, you can just click these arrows as you need. And if you accidentally put it in the wrong spot, you can click undo and redo in order to move those around. Spotlight also has something like this. So when you click Spotlight and you have this arrow, you're gonna see that Dustin Backey highlighted this. Now, this is cool because your users and I'll try to have one hop in. And look, an imposter, Dustin Backey, just hopped in. What he is going to do is he is actually going to work on annotating as well. He has the option to draw all over my screen. And so you can see he just put a line on there. He can put an arrow to say, I have a question. This is a good way to have your students actually show exactly what they have questions on. They could also text, they could put text and say, you can see that Dustin Backey, imposter, just said what 
on the screen. You can also clear everything. You can clear viewers' drawings. So if someone puts something on there that you aren't happy about, you can get rid of that. As you can see, there is a lot that you can do with this annotation thing. And you could save these at the end and you can exit at any time. And so this takes your presentation to the next level, right? We have annotated captions automatically coming up and annotations on the screen. So there's never been better ways to convey material to your students. In fact, you probably couldn't do a lot of this in the classroom. So this is a positive of being online. Okay, so we are back on Zoom. And the next two tips I want to show you are relevant right within a meeting. So we could see that this Yahoo has jumped into my Zoom meeting and has my same name. Now, I don't like that. Maybe he's not willing to change it. So as the host, what I can do is come over here, put my mouse over his screen, go to these three arrows, and I could rename him. So I'm going to name him the imposter. Here we go. So this is a small thing, but if you're working with students and you are trying to take attendance or see who is in the meeting, it's important that their actual name is on the screen. If you have your Zoom settings set up so that users have to be authenticated, you will notice that their name should pop up accurate as it is. You can also go to your security setting and allow students to rename themselves. Hopefully you don't run into any students who aren't willing to rename themselves, but if that's the case, you can easily do this. Or maybe you have two Dustins and you want to differentiate between which is which. So for this next tip, I actually have to move my iPad out of this room. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so now that my iPad has successfully been moved out of this room, you might notice that they have become unmuted. And the reason I had to move it out of the room to do this was that the two devices would echo across themselves being next to each other. And so if you're going to use a secondary device like an iPad or a phone, you need to make sure one is muted at all times to not get this weird super echo. So my iPad is in the other room and... This imposter, Dustin Backy, just won't shut up. He's being loud. We hear his cats. We hear his dogs. We hear the construction. Or maybe he just is being too loud in general. You can simply come in here, hover over, and press mute. And then you can mute them from far away. So that's convenient if you could identify who's making the noise and want to just mute that one person. However, if you want to mute the entire class, what you can do is just press alt and M, and everyone gets muted instantly. This is besides you as the presenter. So this is a fast and easy way that you can help manage and just make your meetings go more smoothly. And that was the fourth tip. Another little bonus tip as we move into our last tip for this video is, let's say this imposter Dustin dinosaur is just being a ruckus and you need to get him out of here. You can go in here and press remove. And if you remove them, they will be unable to rejoin the meeting. Now, that is pretty powerful of a kick, so you need to keep that in mind. But there are settings that you could go into to remove or to allow them to rejoin at a later time. Okay, so the final tip I have for you regarding using Zoom is how to take stock or attendance of who was there. For whatever purpose you might want, to use that for, you might want to know who was there and for how long and when they showed up. Um, and so what you can do is most of us might want, might be asking students to type their name in chat or you go through participants and you scroll down and look through to see who was here and who wasn't. But that's a really inefficient way and it's a waste of your time. So let's go ahead and end this meeting and I'll show you a better way. Okay, so now that this meeting has ended, what I'm going to do is I'm on this main page of Zoom and I'm going to go up to the top and over here to the left to reports. 
when I click on reports, I'm going to choose this usage tab. And we will see that we were just in this personal meeting room with the Dustin imposter. And if I click on these participants, this number, it will show me who was here, what time they joined, and what time they left, and how long they were there for. And then you could actually export this to a CSV file. And now you have your attendance where you can open it up and arrange it by alphabetical order, name, email, all those sort of things. So this is the fastest way to take attendance within Zoom. So in this video, we went over five tips that every educator should know for using Zoom, including ones that make it much more accessible to your students. And those were using the native PowerPoint presentation caption and auto captioning and translation rather than the in Zoom virtual background presentation of a PowerPoint. We also showed how you can annotate your presentations and allow students to annotate your present presentations we showed you how to mute all of your, mute your whole group, and we also showed how you could rename your students. And finally, we showed a fast way of taking attendance. So I hope that these make your life as an instructor way easier this fall. And if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel where we will go through more tips to help you innovate and elevate as you educate. And if you want, to find more like-minded educators who are striving to be the best educator they can be, I encourage you to check out the Epic Higher Ed Mastermind group where you actually get access to all of our workshops in there, which is really powerful. Thank you for being here and I can't wait to see you in the next video.